Hey Nick, uh, lovely to see you here at the Akai booth, uh, yes. Friday morning, fresh as a daisy. <laughs> yes, definitely. So um, your kind of role here is to to evangelise, I guess, the, what the force could do. Because I mean, maybe a lot yeah, of don't I, get I would that. say that's um, um, kind of a renaissance man here at uh, at Akai. I do a lot of different things. However, force is without a doubt my specialty, and what I've spent the past year doing is just pushing it to its limit. <clears throat> and this is something that I feel like is really necessary and kind of a missing role at a lot of companies is to say what can you actually do with what we have and one of the things that I found just uh, uh, to, to be one of our core issues was um, last year this time we really didn't understand what this was capable of um, and we have definitely discovered what this thing is which is a musical instrument um, essentially we felt like um, electronic music needs to be performed right this is this is really important in a wide open territory and the current line of products that are out do not offer a all-in-one solution to perform electronic music it's always a laptop with a bunch of pieces which is great but to unify that into a musical instrument is something that we feel like is what makes force the most unique and powerful instrument on 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 the market uh, essentially a create your own instrument on the grid uh, so what I started with was a creative experiment um, uh, on a kit that I called Dilla's Dream because I figured I would be the one showing Jay Dilla force if, if he was alive. Yeah. And that's, that's all it took was like, what do I want to show Dilla, right? So I said, the, let's just go to this side of the pads. This is just going to be more drums, okay? Uh, but not just more drums in some sort of unstrategic manner. Like I have two different kick drums. Then I have my snare, and then it's open hi hat, and I just so that way I can flow from the left and the right, and always play drums. But then what's interesting is you have things like different delay speeds, or like a rim click with a reverb, shakers, and then up here just a bunch of other versions of drums as well. So this is the most probably used part of it. Um, and then over here I have uh, round robin style pads. So what's awesome about this? There's 212 samples on 64 pads. The orange pads have bass lines. And then that's the really so each time you press you get a progression of a note. Exactly, exactly. And you can figure out this mathematically to so create like You know what I mean? Just like really interesting combinations of it. But the blue pads, those are uh, chords. So when I play them together I can Second song. Third. And then I'm going to show you how quickly you can actually manipulate this drum kit. So I'm going to release those round robins. And I'm going to do it fast because you can <clears throat> do it really fast. Pardon my voice. So I just retuned this. Now I can play a new song. And so you got a bass line going, you got all these different chords, and it's constantly an evolving kit. It just uh, rotates to different samples. So you can waste very little movement and get a whole song of sound. It's, it's exciting, man, uh, to, to, to remove from 16 pads, which still obviously has its purpose with our product line, but to be able to um, have more pads uh, makes force more of a musical instrument. And it just seems like there's some very clever ways to program this up so you can create your own workflows and whatever. Exactly. Works. So I have here um, a different kit and this one demonstrates something that I call vertical movement. So you crawl up on the pads and when your hands are like this I call these verts. It's important that if we're going to call this an instrument to have terminology. So we feel that's our responsibility at Akai to um, kind of 
put these things out there based on our experience and then see what sticks. So like everything is a working title right now. We want to make sure the community has involved. But this is a style of drumming that I call trick style. And uh, it's just essentially having note repeat on on 16th notes. Now this is not a new feature and a lot of people have been, uh, have created rhythms like this, but we have taken it uh, to another level, right? We really wanted to step up and we feel like this is how drums were intended to be performed on the drum machine. So this allows quantized drums to be performed. I'm at 142 beats per minute and uh, I'll show you how this works. Awesome. It's I mean, so much fun, man. So you've got note repeats on certain pads and not another, so you can... No, it's all actually, all it's all of them. So I, what I'm doing is I'm just, I have the timing down on my finger, so you can be a little bit off. It still requires accuracy. But you just don't hold for any yeah. length of time, but you can if you want. Exactly, uh -huh, right? Interesting. And this yeah, can yeah. be applied to um, melody and harmony as well. So this kit... Um, demonstrates what I call polyphonic arping or arpeggios. So a typical arp, as you know, plays all the notes in sequence. And what I would do is I would record a clip and then I would want another layer on top of that. And I was like, man, I just wish I could do this live. So I took this round robin style and created a kit starting with this little Game of, Th Game of Thrones melody. It's always something like Jay Dillard's theme or like Game of Thrones that <laughs> inspires these kits. So if I turn it on, I can... right here. I'll start playing that now. Compelling. On and yeah. on and yeah, on and yeah, on yeah. and on and on and the thing is I'm doing this right. I'm in control, but there's a there's a certain element where the the, the machine takes over. Well, um, it's helping. Yeah, it's and it's a uh, musicians know what flow state feels like, right? This is this is what we strive. This is why we practice to get into that. This helps you get into it really quick. And yes, I practice a lot, but I've been saying this all week. Like my daughter's ten, and I'm teaching her this technique. And she loves it. <laughs> She's, she doesn't know drumming any other way. And that's the key here, guys. It's like, this is, uh, this is some uh, science fiction style stuff that is available to you right now. Um, and as people get their hands on this and they play it, they understand that satisfaction that I'm talking about. One last thing I want to show you on the kit level before I go into lead instrument um, and the arranger and some of the new features is look at my tempo. So I'm going to go up to, I don't know, 170 just because, uh, but I, I'm comfortable playing up to 220 beats per minute. Um, and I can do this because I'll have people come over and, and turn up the speed dial as I'm playing. So this one really demonstrates the two handed potential. So I have all my kits set up. These are like round robin toms. So like it's just.
right. So it's drumming and it's it's live and it's improvised, and you can tell I'm passionate about this, right? I'm like all over the place, but I think that this is uh, something that I want to see. I think it's something that other people are going to be able to do. Well, I mean, it seems to me that you're sort of, because you're spending a lot of time with this you're, and you're inside it, you're pioneering to, or formalizing some of these techniques into things. Exactly, and I think that it's important to do this within a company because uh, most sciences are innovated in universities, uh, physics, uh, you name it. And music technology is innovated within companies, and we need innovators to think about these type of things, not just from a technical standpoint, right? which is what I'm about to get into, but from a musical standpoint and really finding solutions to the problems within the genres that we're creating. So live rhythm within electronic music, that's been a big problem and I think we've solved it with something simple like this. Now next I think is the lead instrument. So I'm gonna we, look. Should, we should also repoint out, if people don't know what force is, this is standalone, this is, there's, no, oh, yeah, there's no computer attached <laughs> to this, right? <laughs> okay, so, you know, uh, uh, Nick, sometimes I, uh, I forget, I've been off standalone for, for over a year now, and again, I, I want this to come off as, as, as genuine. Uh, I, it's not because I work at Akai, it's because this really allows me to do more than I was able to do with my previous setup. Um, and I never touch a mouse, so to, to it, it, I'm making my music on the instrument. Right. So I can perform it, and this is what I have right here. So I want to show you guys the um, the arranger. So this is uh, something we put into beta, and we made uh, some 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 improvements on it. Unfortunately, I want to keep this video mostly about the instrument, but the arrangers it, it's, it's an coming key one, all right? And in addition to that, we're going to have a drum synth. Um, and what this allows you to do is record your clip performances, and and this means that. It marks a paradigm shift in what's possible in the DJ booth as well, because as our brand and music becomes more connected, which is absolutely in the timeline and the in the in the this next decade is to make everything uh, a connected piece. Uh, you could have one of these in the DJ booth and play out your entire project. In fact, mix from one project to the other versus just playing out the master like you do as a DJ. Kick drum's not loud enough live. Turn it up in the moment. You just want to play a lead solo over something, all right, load up your synth. Uh, say you get better at mixing 10 years down the road, you can, you're like, oh man, like, oh, I saw Nick in New York and he changed the patch on his favorite song. Little things like that is what performance allows. And um, I have this project here that, um, you know, what I'll do instead is I'll show you the lead synth that I have on here. And this is a mode that has scales start on the root. And the Launchpad has this and other grid controllers have this. But what's really cool about Force is you have the knobs directly above the pads. And you can see, Nick, I'm like literally trying to split this Force in half. And these knobs are, are so solid, which that allows you to really lay into them and do uh, uh, this kind of uh, eight knobs at a time type movement. Right, so I could be playing with my thumbs, and I'll show you how this works. So I have glide, LFO rate, and depth set up here, as well as modulation, and I'll I'll, I'll add a little bit of delay in there too. I'll turn off the note repeat. Another things that are really great about this is I can go ahead and modulate other aspects too. And if you can imagine being able to lay out all of your favorite parameters on your synthesizers on these pads. So the ones that took two, two hands, like uh, glide and uh, cutoff filter on my Voyager, glides down here, cutoff is up here. You're not gonna be able to do that. So uh, I think there's gonna be some really interesting ways that people take advantage of these strong knobs. Something as simple as that and having it above the play, uh, uh, pad bed, uh, again, make this more like a musical instrument. So obviously this thing is, extremely powerful. 
Yeah, it's yeah. the most misunderstood product I think that's out there, and we've learned a lot over this year. So I hope that this kind of like awakens your mind to why we we have this on the market. And at nine ninety nine, this is more affordable than a DAW. Like if you're starting off, we have the most affordable solutions on the market right now, and they're standalone and they're evolving constantly. The um, the theme of this has been ever evolving, and I think it's important to kind of define evolution. It's it's bottom up, right? So we, we see a problem, we create a solution, and we build that culture from the bottom up. So if you're a DJ and you want to perform, or if you're making electronic music and you just don't want to DJ for your career, then get a force, man. This is the instrument for you. This is a scalable instrument to perform music, and I think that it uh, has the potential of starting a movement. Um, and we're going to make sure that you know how to do this. So pad theory is something that we're really going to start to, to, to focus some energy on. So this next year, the, the users out there know how to actually use the pads in constructive ways with proper terminology, um, chord shapes, uh, leads, how to do the knobs, all of that stuff is uh, what we want to share with you. So you can do this type of creative things yourself. Nick, thank you so much. That's really interesting. Yeah, all right. Thank you, Nick.